All right, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be talking about conditional operators. That may sound like a big word, but it's basically just to test something to see uh, what it is. It's using an if-else statement. So we'll go ahead and we've gotten our grade. So it asks the person what is their grade in history. Then it grabs the grade as an integer and stores it. And then what we're going to do is test the grade uh, against a couple of different things. So we'll type if grade. Last time we did um, is less than something. But this time I'm going to show you all the conditional operators there are. So let's say we were shooting for an 89 uh, for our grade in history. And we want to test that. We would not type if grade equals 89 because what that does is it tries to set that. You see up here we're setting grade equal to the next thing. So that would try and tell it grade is equal to 89. Not asking it is it equal to 89 but saying it is and that's not true. So what we do is we do double equals mark. So that says if grade is equal to 89, then system dot out dot print line congrats you got an 89. Then we'll do else system dot out dot print line you did not get the grade you were shooting for. Alright, run that. What was your grade in history? It was an 89. Congrats, you got an 89. So test that to see if it's 89. If it's true, it prints this out. If it's not true, it'll print this out. So let's run it one more time. What was your grade in history? It was a 1. You're not the grade you were shooting for. Obviously, if it was a 1, you have some issues there. So let's also test uh, to see if it was a failing grade or not. If Oops. If grade was less than or equal to 50, so that's the sign for less than or equal to 50, then you passed. Oh, sorry. You failed. Failed. That would be a huge fail. Um, passed for if it was not less than or equal to 50. So that's everything above 50. So what was your grade in history? Say we got an 89, passed. If we got below a 50, a 50 or lower, then we failed. All right, so that tested against that. Uh, we can also do not equal to. So if you say we did not, say we uh, have a phobia of the number five. So we do not want to get a grade five. So not equal to, exclamation point, equals sign, five. If it's not equal to 5, then we'll print out, you didn't get a 5. Phew. Because we're scared of that number and we can't can't deal with it. Um, you got a 5. Run. Something, I don't know. Um, <coughs> anyways, we'll do, what was your grade in history? 5. Uh-oh, we got a 5 run. So. We could, we could either do equals equals to 5 and then put this up here, but we could also do it if it is not equal to 5, then you do something. So if we'll do 4, then you didn't get a 5. All right, so if it's not equal to this, then it prints out this. If it is equal, anything else than this, then it prints out 5. Uh, just like we did uh, less than or equal to, we could do greater than or equal to. So say it was greater than or equal to a... 90 because our teacher wanted us to get a 90 or over so it was greater than or equal to then you got the grade your teacher wanted uh, you got below the grade the teacher wanted and on our project we got a 91 you got the grade your teacher wanted but she also wanted us to just get a 90 or above. So 90, you also got the grade your teacher wanted. If you got anything below that, then you d got below the grade the teacher wanted. So that's pretty much that besides greater than or equal to, which we already checked out. So those can be used to test all kinds of things. Um, remember that if you're trying to test this, if you're trying to test if it's equal to, it is not that, but it's a double question or a double equals. So keep that in mind when you're trying to test all kinds of things like that. Uh, may screw you up sometimes. So go ahead and move on to the next tutorial and we'll be checking out some different things.